Hello, welcome to Classic View from the Boundary from Test Match Special. I'm Jonathan Agnew, and during this series, we're picking out some of our favourite interviews from the last 40 years to celebrate four decades of welcoming famous cricket fans from all walks of life to the TMS commentary box. Well, for this offering, we're going to a famous game in 2017. That was the first day-night test played in England. The game's a one-sided affair, England beating West Indies in three days at Edgebaston, but we did have time for a memorable interview. Richard Osman has become one of the most recognisable faces on British television as co-host of the cult Tea Time TV show Pointless. But as we'll find out, he got in front of the camera purely by accident. And with the floodlights shining at Edgebaston, Richard began by telling me about his love of cricket. I'm a watcher and a studier, I'd say. I've got very bad eyesight. You know, I can't drive, I can't see. You know, I can never see a ball when, when cricket's going on, so I can't play it. You know, I've tried, right. I've tried to bowl a bit, and I, but I can't. I just can't see the ball, so there's no point me ever playing. But, but I've always loved it. I love watching, you know, I love, I love just kind of hearing it, and, you know, I love the, the yes. TMS and, you know, the, the, the atmosphere of the thing. But, yeah, I can't, I can't tell a straight ball from a googly, from a, or yeah. I can't tell any of the nuance. Never have been able to. That will surprise a lot of people, I think, who see you on the telly every mm. day. Well, I think, you know, it's one of those things is, you know, I, 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 do have, I do have vision, I'm not, you know, I, I, but I'm visually impaired. And, you know, I don't think, see things at speed. I don't see small things. I just, you know, I can't do it at all. But, you know, as anyone who's listening who's visually impaired, I know the pl plenty there are, you do compensate. You know, I, I can, there's things I can see and my brain fills in a lot of the rest. And then, you know, it's voices. You know, people sometimes say, oh, I like to have, see sport without the commentary. And you think, oh, I can't. I can't do sport without that. I need to, sometimes I need a commentator to tell me what just happened because, yes. you know, I don't always see it. No. So how do you, what enjoyment do you get then from watching a sport? Do you find it hard to see? You? I um, think what's up with something like cricket, as I say, what, what I'm not seeing is the nuance. I'm not seeing some sort of, you know, beautiful sort of turn of the wrist of, of a bowler. I'm not seeing the ball turn, all that kind of stuff. But what I like are the personalities and the stories. You know, that's what I've always liked. You know, so in this test, for example, you know, I am interested in this young West Indian team and what happens when you're put under this sort of pressure and you know they've come over to, to England and they're going to have to have three tests of this and what happens to them as men I think that's interesting yeah. I am interested in you know who is going to be Alistair Cook's opening partner are they going to find someone what happened to Hamid for example which I want to yes. ask you about in a bit <laughs> uh, you know I like that I love the soap opera of it that's what I like and you know this is my favorite England team for a really long time and it's and, it, and it's because of the people and I like the personalities you know I like Stokes I like um, Moeen yes. uh, you know I like Joe Root as a captain I like Johnny Bairstow I think it's a really really interesting team but yeah I like the stories I like the soap opera of a sport and everything else to me is just everything else is a storyline yes you know that's what I like digging I'm beneath not... the surface really and getting under well, getting really know, under the skin of it it's like if you if you love music but you don't play music you still enjoy it yes. you know I can't really tell if someone's playing the guitar well but I know I like a song and I'm like that with sport you know I always I like the stories you know I like what's going on beneath if you know what I mean yes. but you know who is going to be Alistair Cook's opening partner one day someone will come along uh, who will become a star you know and I love seeing that and when you get a certain age you you see so many promising careers start and you see that only a few of them really bear fruit so rem you remember Joe Root starting of course. and you think oh maybe we've got a player here but we think that about everyone yes but you know he does become a player and even Alistair Cook when he's starting you think, oh maybe we've got one and now you know he's, he's sort of part of our natural you know our, our, our national life and you think well is that going to be Wesley? Is that going to be Jennings? You know, but who knows? Yes. Who knows? And that, you know, that, that's what I love. What, what I love also hearing you talk about it, and I, and I try and do it when I go out and talk to kids or, or whatever it may be, is that there is so much to sport other than actually having to having been playing it. Yeah. yeah there, there's so many other aspects of, of, of loving a sport, falling in love with a sport, yeah. for all the reasons you've mentioned, actually. Yeah. The fact that you're unable, for whatever reason, perhaps to go out there and actually do it yourself. Well, you know, it's, in it's interesting. A few years ago, when, when, when well, it's, it's a few years ago now, the London Olympics, and suddenly you were getting all these non sports fans going, yes. saying, I didn't know, this is amazing. And I wanted to say to them, you know, if you love sport, we have this every single day of our lives. We have something like this. We have this excitement. We have the heroes and the villains. We have the old rivalries. We have the fathers and sons who played in the same team. You know, our entire life is this incredible soap opera. And if you've ever watched a reality show or EastEnders or Coronation Street, that's what we've got for our entire lives. Yes. But it's not written. You never know what's going to happen. And I just think a life without sport, you know, it gives you so much, doesn't it? It yes, gives it does. just the joy it brings you and the stories it brings you. There's very few other things where you can sit at this table, you know, for the whole day, one person coming in, boycott comes in, Kurt the Ambrose comes in, and no one ever runs out of things to talk about. Yeah. You know, isn't know. that wonderful? Well, well, thank goodness. Thank goodness we don't. You can watch this, by the way. Watch the interview uh, on the TMS Facebook page if you, uh, oh, if, really? you if you fancy it. I know. That's 
Central is. I'd, I'd have dressed up if I'd known. <laughs> no, actually, you're much smarter than most of us. <laughs> it used to be back in the old days. You used to love going on radio because you, because you didn't have to shave, you didn't have to I dress know. up. These days, they've got well, webcams. Well, actually, I'm, I'm I'm very smart for me because I knew I was meeting you. Well, so. do you know what? I haven't actually shaved this morning, and um, no one's mentioned it apart from boycott. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, say, you haven't shaved, young man. That's probably the first words he ever said to you. Didn't yeah, you? pretty much. I pretty know. much. No, he we said, have, you're not as smart as you look. We have to. Have, first words. We have to put up with Jeffrey. Uh, um, having obviously followed cricket, are, mm. are, you, are you surprised by Jeffrey? Therefore, have you, that was your first encounter, was it presumably with, well, with, it's with, in, with the great man? It's very. It, it was my first encounter. Actually, I feel like I have met him. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's, I think it's impossible to have grown up in England and not feel like you've met Jeff Foyker at one time because he's so familiar. You know, when you go to New York for the first time and you think, oh, yeah. I've been here before because it's so familiar from films. That's what meeting Jeff Foyker is like. But no, working in telly, so I thought, you know, you work with everybody, and some people are very different on screen to how they are off screen. Some people are very funny on screen and very yep. sort of larger than life and you meet them off the screen, they're very sort of doer and very, they keep themselves to themselves. Uh, I would say that from the from the two minutes chat I just had with Jeffrey Boycott is literally identical to how I thought he was going to be. They didn't let you down, did No, he, you know what, he really didn't. I don't know if that's a show, but uh, I, listen, you put up with him for many, many years and it's, uh, that is... Uh, I, I, all, I did stitch him up the other day though, you may or may not have seen, but anyway, mm. that's another thing. So I would imagine, and I'm, I'm guessing a bit, Richard, but do you, are you a big Test match fan. I mean, do you do you like you know, your sort of analysis of the game with Test cricket? Obviously, there's endless material there. But I mean, do you like the one-day game as well? Do you, yeah, you know, I prefer the one-day game in a fu- in a funny kind of way. I like the one-day game because it's more more happens quicker, right? You okay. know, and I like that, and and we get to the result quicker. You know, I'm a TV format. This is your right? reality TV side but, coming but out. But it is yes. really, you know, yeah. that, that's been my job forever. Is you think of a format and you make it half an hour long, and you have a beginning, a middle, and end. Somebody wins at the end. Yes. You know, so for me, you know, I'd, I'd do 10-10 cricket. It wouldn't worry me. You know, just you know, get it done and, and, and do it three times. Um, I love, I, to be honest, I love all forms of the game. I do love test cricket because, you know, I love the rhythm of it and the mood of it and, you know, the TMS thing of just, OK, we're going to sit down, this is what we're doing today. You yeah, know, that's take hours, but we'll, yeah. Exactly. We're, we're your company for the day. Exactly. Yeah. But I love 2020 because it brings other people into the game and I do think it's an entry drug. You know, I really do. I think if you've watched... Think it'll work? Uh, yeah, 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 I think so. Uh, and, you know, I think it's... Look, in football I support a team and international football I'm not fussed about but test cricket uh, I love you know I love watching England and I love supporting England um, uh, you know and, and in terms of county cricket oh because I'm a Sussex boy oh, right, and so I used to go to Sussex all the time well, I love it to sit and watch cricket oh, there oh god yeah. it's just great down yes. at the county ground it's, uh, it's an absolute joy but because I live in London and have done for many years I just don't get the chance to go down there so I've sort of fallen out with with um county cricket a little bit so so test cricket is where I get my cricket fix these days yes. and I suspect if, if Sussex you know won that won the title again you know so I got briefly interested about 10 years ago uh, but uh, yeah I, I, I would love to move back down to Hove you know get a nice one of those nice little fillers by the county ground oh, yeah. and spend perfect. my days there perfect but with your television head on mm. though I mean what, what, what could you do with cricket do you think because we're searching obviously for for audiences and uh, you know to make the game more appealing can, can yeah. the game do anything else to help itself do you think I mean it's shortening its format it's trying to play at night is there anything that, that, that you think you grab, grab people I honestly because I, I, I think about other sports a lot and I think there's various sports that really need to get their games in order I think 2020 is one of the few kind of sporting things that actually works beautifully and I think once we get the city based um, oh, version yeah. of it I think it's going to really really work I think people are going to like that you know if you're working in TV you need something that takes a certain amount of time that's what you need if you're running Sky Sports you're running BBC or something you need something that's two hours long three hours long that you can schedule and you can put in because that's how television works and what Whatever people think about TV dictating sport, it sort of has to. If you want to grow your game and make money in your game, TV has to because that's where the money comes from. So you, you sort of have to take that. Um, and if you want test cricket to grow, I think you need to bring more people in. I think 2020 is really beautifully done. I like the way they do it. You know, I like going to see it live. I like watching it on television. You know, the one thing to improve cricket in this country is the weather, and there's nothing we're ever going to no. be able to do about it. But, you know, enough of watching things and they get rained off you know you, one in three games getting rained off or, sure. or going down to Duckworth Lewis you know it's not great but there's n- literally there's nothing we can do about it that's why it's so huge out in India and Pakistan because 
they can do what they want with it yes. because you know what it's by and large you're going to you're going to get the game played and you can see the IPL you know they, they kind of sure yeah so 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 we're right to keep cutting down to satisfy the demand of less attention span or or, or, yeah. or, or whatever it may be rather than trying to encourage people hang on actually you know, it's, it's actually rather more glorious to actually extend things a bit and you know, enjoy the whole full flow of a test match you, you think cut 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 and just That's, give them what they want honestly that's my opinion. I know it's not a popular opinion, but it is my opinion. I oh, know, but people they would agree with and, you. And, and I think culturally, that's where, that's where we go in almost every area. You look at music. I was made to go to the proms the other day for, <laughs> for a podcast, and it's kind of fine, and yes. it's, it's all right. But you know what? Three, someone's written a three-minute pop song, and that seems to work better for, for people. <laughs> now, if you get into music through pop songs, and then suddenly you hear Brahms, and you love it, you think, great, that's great. And it's the same with cricket if you've got kids who can watch any sport they want by the way and they can play anything they want on xbox or whatever they want to do yes if you show them a test match very very hard to sort of catch them to, for them to work out what it is that you love you know because what you love is the fact that you sat around as a child bored out of your mind because we had nothing to do as children right. because we grew up in the 70s and so you know watch this whole five there days was on telly. nothing to do and if you ever bunked off school there was never anything on telly unless there was a test match yes you know and if there's a test match you think brilliant, I'm going to do three hours of this and I've pretended to have a headache. Right, that's not going to happen anymore. That world doesn't exist anymore, which is, you know, it's good and bad, but it doesn't exist anymore. But how do we keep test cricket then? If Whereas, we're well, away? this is what I think. If you're, if you're a mum or dad and you're sitting watching the 2020 and your child comes into the room and there's a bit of music and suddenly someone's hitting a six or whatever it is, you know, and they get to know the personalities and they get to know some of the players and they get to see Ben Stokes and they might go, Oh, I like this guy. I like Ben Stokes. He's hitting the sixes. Hmm. And then, yeah, you watch a few 2020s, watch it. And then suddenly, this is on. And they're like, well, what's this now? And you go, oh, look, you won't like, no, this is not for you. It's five days on. You won't like it at all. No, no, no. What is it? No, 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 no. no. You, honestly, this is not for you. So you, have, you don't have the attention span to watch this. You go, but that's Ben Stokes. Yeah, yeah, but he's not. He won't be hitting sixes like he normally does. So just leave it. And you know what? They'll be looking over your shoulder, and you know, five minutes later, suddenly they're sitting down on the sofa and they're saying, "Oh, I'm a, I'm a, it's a bit of reverse I'm, psychology." I might have a little answer. bit of a cup of tea right. because cricket is cricket. Cricket is about someone bowling to someone and them trying to hit it as hard as they can. Yes, you know that's all cricket is. You yes. know, and you have to distill that down for people to see the beauty of it, and then they will find out for themselves yes. that you know you can watch this for five days and it adds to your life. You know, because it's uh, it is, but you can't. No one grows up like we grew up anymore. Uh, that generation has gone. Yeah. Are you into the stats of cricket? I mean, I can imagine because you know you're you're going your brain's going a million miles an hour. Yeah. Um, but we'll find out in a minute if you are the, the, the sort of know all figure or, no, the, or not. I'm very much not the know all in uh, in cricket. But the brain's but... going, isn't it? I mean, and, and yeah, are love... you energised by numbers and stats and yeah. records and? I'm energised by that. I'm energised by top tens. I'm energised by who the top ten batsmen in the world are and who okay. the top ten bowlers in the world are and the, who the top ten nations. You know, I like a list. You know, that's what I right. like, things being ranked and being ordered. Because otherwise, why are we playing? You know, I mean, why are England playing the West Indies? You know, I'd quite like us to be the number one test nation in the world. So let's try and win this 3-0 because it'll help us out there. But otherwise, there's no, there's no need to play. No. You know, there's no, there's no reason. We're not going to get relegated if we, uh, yeah. if we lose. Um, so yeah, so I context love, is what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Right? You know, I love yes. looking at the county averages. I love, and then I like looking through the averages and see how comes he's got, and you know, seeing how many not outs there are, and so what the average actually means. And so you know, so I love all that, and yes. just because it tells a little story. All those numbers tell stories, yes. and those are the Analysis. stories I like. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And then seeing, I like seeing if people have. Oh, who was high up last year and they're low down this year? And why is that? What's going on with them? What's the okay. problem there? Or who was low down and now they're suddenly up here? And, you know, that's what I love. I love the human stories. And numbers always tell you the yeah. human stories because you can't spin the numbers. The, the, the numbers, by and large, don't lie. Right. And do, 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 well, that is true. Mm. And do the numbers stick? I mean, you like Andrew, who sits to my left here, who, who somehow has got this, this voracious brain yeah. that just, just, just hoovers up everything. But what's, what's so annoying, Frank, but is it, what is amazing is it all stays in there. Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. I think it's, I think it's one of those things. I was thinking when I, when I was, you know, 10, 12, 14, I could tell you everything, I'd reel off everything about cricket, football, right. snooker, all the, you know, every one is one, every tournament, blah, blah, blah. I think when you get older, there's too many of them. 
You know, I've seen too many test matches now. I've seen, I couldn't tell you so won the no cup final last year because yeah. it's just, because it, it's always roughly the same. Yes. Uh, so over, over the years, a lot of it um, drops out. But names I'm quite good with. I'm good. I like remembering stories and people's names and all that kind of stuff. Right. But um, yeah, the numbers. I mean, you just told me how many um, first class wickets you took, and that's a number I'll never forget. Well, you won't forget that. That's an yeah, easy exactly. one. Six, 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 six. six, six, six. Even I can remember that. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, well, I know. Yeah, that, that impresses you, does it? Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I can't, <laughs> I, I'm not, honestly, I would have after 666 I would have just put the ball down and, and walked off but you see what it seems to be typical of you and it's a great question is that you said how many balls did you bowl after you took your 666th mm. and I, I mean I, I didn't even think of asking myself that question yeah. I'd have to look it up now but that's interesting because you must have known that 666 you also well, must have known I don't I'm think a, I did. Oh, really? I don't think I did, know. But you must have known that I'm about to, yes. I'm about to head off and do something else now. And oh, at some I was going point, to finish. You must I have lost. thought, when you yes. took that 666th wicket, Chris Adams. Yes. That's, I, I don't have that knowledge, yeah. you told me. No, but nobody sort uh, of howled, like made a devil noise or something. But you must, a little bit of you must have thought, I wonder if that's the last wicket I'm ever going to take. So you must have known what you were going to do next. And that I find fascinating. I rather wish I had now, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, it's... We just walked off on a cold derby day and... But isn't that amazing? Pack my kit up. Because that's what you'd done for however many years you were playing, and it's the last time yeah. that you did your the thing that you were paid to do for so long, and the thing that bought you everything you've had in your life, and that's the last that's the last time you did it. It's amazing. I'm terribly shallow, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like we all are. <laughs> no, we I, all are. But I don't think you are, because you just take me to a little depth, eh, see, that I should have really thought about at the time. But as you know, we, we, sometimes it's nice to, to work out the last time we're ever going to do... Yeah. the thing that we do because there is always there's a last time for everything isn't there well, I suppose, I suppose it's so, a yeah. terrifying thought no, no no last time for pointless head I hope we well, had a great fun on your show you know. oh you, you lot were so brilliant I love it whenever we have sports people on it's so competitive very competitive in such a petty way uh, and especially with you lot because you all knew each other so yeah, well you were not just sports people it was but tough. you were mates colleagues well. and friends and sports oh, people I know God, I absolutely loved it it was a heady mix we, have, we don't have to do anything and <laughs> sometimes you've got to G people up and sort of you know get amongst people yeah. On that, you're just thinking there was just a bunch of people here who are desperate to knock everybody Absolutely. else out. You okay. know, a lot of people, when Ebony and uh, and Blowers got knocked out in the first round, <laughs> getting 200 points, which is humiliation. Now, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people who were friends, mm. might have a you know might feel a bit bad for them, no, no. or might put an arm around the shoulder. No, no, you no. Know, literally, all six of you, honestly, openly you mocking, laughed. Just thought it was the best thing that had ever happened. Does it happen very often? 200. Uh, it, it does happen. It right. does happen because sometimes if someone gets 100, you try and chase a low score and you know you know you go out on a limb which i think to be fair to ebony is is uh, is, is, is what she did yes. uh, so it does happen but um yeah not not not, not a huge amount of time no. and certainly not in front of all your friends <laughs> <laughs> We, I mean, she's laughing at the back. She is. I mean, we, we've forgotten about it. Honestly, we, we, we'll never mention it again. But it was. <laughs> but I just took, I just stood up for you, Evany. You heard that. You. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't, don't, it's a pleasure. Don't stand up to but here are you. That's sort of the, the the colossus in the corner, sort of who's got yeah. all the information and is it is finger fingertips. I mean, I, is that really you? Are, are you really this this? this person who's absolutely found all knowledge. Well, it's interesting, because on a, on, on a quiz show, one of the things is important to have a, a, a quiz master, in the same way that you always have ex-pros uh, doing sports commentary, because yes. you know you've been there, and if you say something, you have some authority. And it's important on quizzes, I think, to have someone you think they know the answers. You know, And obviously, I don't know everything, because there's so many different subjects on pointless, and I'm not great at science, and I'm not great at like, kind of dates, you know, kind of 16th century. You know what's coming, stuff. presumably, though, do you? you know yeah, what's... well, I've just got a bit of paper in front of me. Right. Um, but my general knowledge is quite good. I've got quite a good pub quiz intelligence. I don't have a great, you know, other intelligence for that. I can do trivia and things like that. So I, I know a lot of stuff, and anything I don't know is absolutely is down there for me. Or, you know, right. I've got an earpiece and people are telling me stuff. But, you know, I think people like to think that you know everything. But if they stop to think about it for one second, I think it would occur to them that right. I don't think he can possibly know. So when Zander, Zander doesn't know any of the questions. And quite often we'll fill in a board of yes. options. And people always say... There's no way he knows all that stuff. He must be cheating. And I say, well, he does, you know, he does know the stuff. Uh, but the thing is, I only ask him if I can see that he wants to be asked. Right, so okay. if there's a board on a subject he knows about, <laughs> he'll wink at you. Know, you. Uh, he'll, he'll be like that, like a puppy dog like, looking at you, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, like, like it's tea time. And I'll go, oh, Zander, you can want to fit in the board. And if it's like kind of World Snooker Champions, I, he'll just be looking away, he'll be looking over somewhere. And I'll go, oh, maybe I'll just fit in this board with that. So I tend to only ask him if I think, he's, yeah, uh, if, if I think he knows the answers. But he's, he's very bright as well. It's such a popular show, though, isn't it? And such a sort of 
obvious, simple format as, as, as these massively successful mm. programs seem to be. And you were there from the start of it, weren't you? Well, you know, your... that's my, my day job is to, is, is to think of TV formats and quizzes and all yes. sorts of stuff and entertainment shows. And it is, it's a really inexact science, is the truth. And, you know, you've, we, you, you really don't know what's going to be successful and what's not. And with Pointless, it actually has a format. It's got a really nice hook, which is, you know, we asked 100 people and you've got to come. You know, that's a nice, that kind of reverse family fortunes thing. In terms of as a, as a format, it's got lots of clunky bits in it, actually. You know, whenever foreigners, because we sell lots of shows abroad, um, and they watch it and they go, what on earth are people watching here? Because I think it's so British. Yes. Because it's so, <laughs> it has such goodwill towards its contestants. And it's so sort of, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very idiosyncratic in its own ways. And, you know, you show it to the Italians or the, or the French, and they're just going, what it? What's everyone laughing at? And so it's it's um it's, it's very inexact, and it's not something you would have put money on. But especially a daytime audience, who are the, the most discerning of, of all, when they take to a show, they really take to it. And you know, so pointless, the chase. There's lots of other you know bargain hunt on appointments for you. Are people they, they, set, they set their days? Yeah, by. yeah exactly. Yeah. And it becomes part of, of, of people's routine in the same way that a test summer becomes part of people's routine. You know, having TMS on is that thing of just going. This is the thing that I love to do. Um, and we're very, very, very lucky that that that, that one caught. You know, it's yes. weird for me because I've never presented anything. I've never dreamt of presenting anything, uh, and I accidentally got into this. Uh, and that the one I presented became long running was uh, was was serendipity, I would say. Right. Well, and it's led to. I mean, I've got to ask you about this and the the women's weirdest crush. I mean, the, the, there are some strange things out there, aren't they? That mm. people vote on somehow. Yes. Yes. How did you feel about being voted as the weirdest crush? Well, I mean, that's, is that, yeah, is that, that, that was or? Heat magazine. Oh, you know what? It's fine. Look, you can't say weirdest crush without saying crush. I guess. So <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I'm very. Yeah, I'm deeply <laughs> comfortable with it. I you have are. to say. Um, is it you flattering? Know, is it? Uh, listen, I, it, it, it doesn't affect my, my, my sense of self, no. which has been built up over many years. So what do your have, kids think? I have, they're appalled by it. <laughs> I mean, goodness me, can you imagine? That's the, I mean, yes. my kids are teenagers, the worst thing because you could ever possibly hear. Dad. I mean, it's just sickening. It's bad enough I'm on television without yeah. this. I was surprisingly voted on a, as a Radio 4 Women's Hour thing, uh, thinking women's crumpets. That's not surprising. I see that. Well, I was surprised. <laughs> not least I didn't know anything about it. And we were okay. on holiday, and, um, and, uh, and my wife is lying on, the, on, a, on a sunbed or something, and one of these harumphs <clears throat> came out. And I said, what's up, dear? She passed me this newspaper. And there was the headline saying, Jonathan Agnew is thinking women's crumpet. Which is, this is bizarre. I mean, yeah. I, I, honestly, I didn't know anything about it at all. I was, I was quite pleased, actually. Yeah, well, no kidding. I mean, she wasn't. But anyway... We really? Went, she, we, that no. would say she's made a good lifestyle choice. No, no. We went, went home and you know, sort of tried to open the front door of the house. It was like a mountain of press releases and requests to do this and that. Really? Oh, this is fantastic. And I was about to phone Peter Baxter up and say, I'm really sorry, but Test Match Special, frankly, you know, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Something exactly. rather big's come up. I'm going to do a calendar. Well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then I saw the list and there I was at the top. Nice. Richard Gere, I guess you love. Richard Gere was fourth. Really? Yeah. Wow. Imran Khan, I think, was ninth. Yeah. What about Nelson to him? Mandela? was in there somewhere. <laughs> it's only when I, it's when I saw Henry Winkler. Oh, Fonzie. Oh, you beat the Fonz. He was at the bottom. No way. That I realised what had happened, and it was one of the most shattering moments of my life. That some fool had simply put it out in alphabetical oh, order. Oh no. no! And I wasn't thinking women's crumpet at all. Oh, the that shattering, is, uh, shattering realisation. But you're in the top ten. Well, I think it was top 50. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it was essentially a list of British men in alphabetical order. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. Oh, wow. it was. It was most disappointing, but these, these things happen. So, oh, the, but the that weird bit, you kind, of, you kind of get over the weird side um, of it. No, that's fine. You know, because it, it, it's Heat magazine, and, and, and Heat magazine, you have to be Ryan Reynolds, you have to be 23 and have torso of the week, and I accept that I'm 46 and I don't have torso of the week. So right. if I'm going to be any sort of crush for that audience, it's going to have to be a weird one. Right. So, yeah, I will, uh, I, I will happily take that. You know, Women's Hour have not been called. Calling. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not sure if they, I'm not sure if they still do their thinking women's crumpet. It doesn't seem very women's out <laughs> anymore, does it? No, I think it's changed now. Times have changed in so many different ways, aren't they? We, it was, we, it was quite a long time we're ago. We're moved in all sorts of sort of corkscrewish directions, aren't we, by we, our culture? We are. But you seem quite a reluctant... I mean, you must, you must be recognised everywhere. I mean, you're mm. enormous, you're ridiculously tall. Yeah. Six foot seven. Kirtley Ambrose style. Well, you're taller than Kirtley. Well, we just had a little I head-to-head, didn't we? It was quite impressive. He's taller than Kirtley. Say, he's clearly in the six seven club. Yeah, he, yeah. he is. So, so you, get, you must get recognised a lot. But is it something that you... I mean, do you enjoy that, given that you... You say you started behind mm. the other side of the camera and creating these things, and suddenly you created yourself in a huge. Yes, a huge... I know it is. It is. I will give you that. It is bizarre. Um, I don't mind it. 
and you know I didn't get on camera till I was 40 odd you know and I and you know you sort of know yourself by the age of 40 and I'd worked with celebrities all my life and I, I saw some people who took to it very badly yeah. some people who took to it very well and they had a different technique so I think I was fairly well armed um, if I take my glasses off then I am sort of unrecognisable or I'm much less recognisable. Because they're I mean, such obvious glasses. I mean. can't see anything, no. you know. <laughs> but that wouldn't be good. I mean, I can't see anything with them on, but when, with them off, I really, really can't. So I was just, just up in Edinburgh last week for the festival uh, with the kids. And so we go there for a week um, and go see loads of comedy. And the Edinburgh Festival is just full of students. And yeah. so it's, you, you can't walk anywhere. It's just no, no, no. crazy. But you take the glasses off, baseball cap on, and with my two kids, one of them leading me by the wrist, just so I don't bump into it anything and i don't get hit by anything uh you know you could you, you can get through the traffic so there's the you know there, there are ways and means of doing it. it's like if you're ever out with sarah millican or alan carr they take the glasses off and you're completely anonymous yeah, and i thought. sort of the height is still difficult and some people do recognize me without the glasses on but if you recognize me without glasses on you deserve a photo that's fine <laughs> honestly that's, 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 that's like where's wally you can honestly you can, you can have it but yeah if i if i take them off it's a uh, it's, it, it's a lot easier and obviously you know there are certain places like when I go down to see Fulham I'm a season ticket holder and where I live everyone knows you so you don't you know you just yes. get normal just people in the village saying hi to each other and you know I don't mind that but um, yeah there are, there are certain places where you think oh, I might just slip the glasses off today. Birmingham New Street today, there's a lot of people getting off the train. I thought, I might just slip the glasses <laughs> into the pocket here and, and hope I can somehow find yeah, my way up this escalator. your way out of the station. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Talk me through Child Genius. It's not mm. a programme I've seen yet. but oh, yeah, um, it's in a treat. Well, I obviously have, mm. because I've been catching up. I mean, there's some controversy there, isn't there? And again, where you are looking to push... TV into sort of an edgy area, perhaps. Um, See, I, I mean, I don't think it... I mean, Child Genius, if, if you haven't seen it, is essentially a competition to find the cleverest 9- to 12-year-old in the country and Mensa are involved and all this kind of stuff. So it's something they, they do anyway, and it's televised. Um, and, well, in terms of controversy, people say, well, should... should kids be competitive is it not too much pressure my honest opinion having grown up in the 70s is there's not enough pressure and competition with kids and if kids have put themselves forward for it i think that's yes. a, a positive thing is and, it the kids putting them forward though or is it the parents pushing uh, them forward? You, there are some parents putting themselves forward but like in cricket you know what you can make your kid practice cricket but if they don't want to do it it's not yeah. going to happen you know and you know if you're training tiger woods up Tiger Woods needs to want to play golf. If you're training the Williams sisters, they need to want to be on that court at six in the morning, otherwise it's not going to work. And the same, you know, the same with cricket. Uh, and I think the same with these kids. You know, uh, there are very competitive parents. There are very competitive kids. You've grown up, your whole career's been around competitive people, as has mine. I think yes. it, doesn't, it doesn't affect me, it doesn't worry me at all. And, you know, there are occasionally tears on the show because it is stressful. But, you know, I see an hour later you know smiling and laughing and playing with their friends and stuff like that you think you've it's, i think it's quite valuable sometimes to go through some competition it's something valuable to lose sometimes as well yeah, correct and, and, to, and to lose well to lose well yes exactly. with dignity and with respect and also but also to win well too with, with the exactly. same the same values and that's yes. what i always say to them i think the whole thing is, is an opportunity to to learn lessons and sometimes you do get kids who, who haven't done brilliantly but you can see the effort they put and you just say at the end of it do you know what that was so brave that was fantastic well done mate and it's you, you know, it's it, it's a lesson learned, and these kids also they find their tribe when they turn up. You see it; they're all the kids at school, and they you know you can see they feel slightly other to to the other kids because because they are super bright. And suddenly they're with all these kids who are also bright, and it's it's lovely to see them looking after each other and hanging out with each other. And you know, you see kids after the kind of week of competition leaving looking completely different yes. you know shoulders not slumped anymore head held high bigger smile you know you see it and, and, and you see a lot of the parents who are saying this is what I wanted for my child I want them to give them this confidence I want them to show them A there are other kids out there and B that they can put themselves through something yes so do you take complaints seriously uh, yeah, about yeah, yeah. that because we're in a very complaining society it's very easy to complain these days it's let's face it remarkably. you can just get your phone out and, and knock out complaints and yeah. demands for apologies and so on exactly right there's you know, Twitter I wouldn't look at yeah. there's no point because you know there's someone will it doesn't matter what you do in the world you know someone will say something so you have to ignore mm. it however you know if smart people come up to me and talk to me or, or you hear from organisations and they say oh I'm not sure about this I'm not sure about that I'll always take it seriously you know I, I've made telly all my life and in TV programs you have a duty of care to people and this program had been on for two years before I did it right? Um, and I'd seen it and I liked it and I liked it for various reasons uh, and I knew what people would say and I knew people would say oh but some of the parents are too pushy and the kids are, are, are too stressed and 
my view is neither of those things are correct. You right. know, and I hold those views very, very strongly, uh, and I will defend them to the hilt. And having done it for two years and chatted to the kids and chatted to the parents, I still hold them. I hold them even more firmly than I have done before. Uh, and so I was very comfortable doing it. But it's only because I'd seen it and I thought, no, you know what? I could see why your first impression might be that, but I think there's something more interesting yes. going on. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good show. But is it all very carefully monitored? I mean, you know, the, oh, whole, the whole yeah, question, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it really is... Yeah, there's psychologists there the whole time. There's, you, you know, you don't record for very long. You know, there's yes. all sorts of breaks and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I always make sure I go, I hang out with the kids in the morning and just chat them through. I tell them what I th- think is going to happen. I tell them, look, 19 of you are not going to win this, yeah. by the way. But what you can do is come out of it feeling better about yourself than you came in and you know sure. you, and I always tell them at the very end I say look you're born with something which is this intelligence right and that can sometimes make you feel very different and people can pick on you for it but actually it's a real gift right and the one thing you've got to do with your intelligence is use it A to make the world a better place and B to make yourself happier those are the two things you can do with that intelligence and that's the message that I, you know I just want to talk to them and say those are the things that you can do with what you've been given yeah. You know, but it is like if you've got a group of young cricketers, nine and twelve, you you know there are life lessons you can teach them via competition and via getting out. Yep, and that means success and failure. Yeah, exactly. You know, you you drop a catch. You know, it's probably one of the best lessons you're going to learn. Absolutely, horrible feeling. Horrible feeling. Where's it all going to end? Television. I mean, where 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 can it still go? Do you think these sort of shows that you are involved in and and, and creating? Where where where? Well, it's it's interesting. You know, five years ago though, it was the death of television and all that kind of stuff because of Netflix and these this other. And listen, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a business person, it's the truth. And Endemol is the company that I, I'm, I'm the creative director of. You know, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a multi billion pound business. So that's my job yeah. is to be a business person to, and, and to build revenues and stuff. And actually, th- there's never been a better time to be in telly because all these services, services, you know, Netflix, Amazon Prime, television becomes all of these things. And people say, kids don't watch telly anymore. And you go, they spend more time on their screen than any generation has ever spent. I mean, so much more time. And everyone is making the content they're looking at, whether it's YouTube, whether it's a game, whether it's a television program, whether, you know, whether it's scheduled in the way that we would watch telly, they are watching their screens more than any generation has ever done before. I wasn't had a fascinating insight into the world of telly and my own appearance on Pointless lives long in the memory.